Photographer Jay Blakesburg has been documenting the Bay Area rock and roll scene for the last 35 years. We're talking about icons on film, Great the Dead, Santana, The Stones, just to name a few. His latest book is right here in my hand, Retro Blakesburg, Volume 1, The Film Archives. It's just out, and he's here to tell us all about it. Welcome to Bay Area Focus, Jay. Thanks for having me. I appreciate us finally connecting. This is great. Yes, it is great, and I'm so honored to meet you. Someday I want to walk through your studio and go even deeper than this amazing retrospective, and congratulations on all the success. Take us through, let's start, say, in the 70s when I was born, and show me some great moments from the 70s, will you? Sure. So, you know, when I was in high school, I was already starting to go see rock and roll and shoot rock and roll. There's a couple of photos in the book, one of Neil Young, one of Bob Dylan, for instance, that uh, I took that my senior year of high school. It was my third wow. week of my senior year. I was 16 years old, September 1978. It was Madison Square Garden. And I went back and looked at that photo. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I went back and looked at the, the date of that uh, photo was taken. It was a school night. So my mother let me get on a train <laughs> from New Jersey, go to New York City and see Bob Dylan. And the night before that was Neil Young at Madison Square Garden. This is Crosby, Stills and Nash, also at Madison Square Garden, September 1979, just after I graduated from high school. Grateful Dead, Bob Weir, Phil Lesh, Bill Kreutzman, Mickey Hart. This was taken... Uh, December 28th, 1979, I was 18 years old. I took a Greyhound bus from New Jersey to San Francisco to see the Grateful Dead in California on their home turf for the first time. My goodness. All right. And of course, this photograph that also captures the crowd. I love the juxtaposition of the artists and the crowd receiving the art, right? Yeah, so this is Jerry Garcia, obviously, mm -hmm. and this was taken on September 2nd, 1978. This was right before my senior year of high school started, 16 years old. My dad loaned me his Pentex camera because he had some Zoom lenses or telephoto lenses, and I didn't have that on my camera yet. And these are the, fir this is the first time I photographed the Grateful Dead, and I've gone on to photograph them and the Grateful Dead experience post Jerry Garcia now for over 40 years. This is Jane Fonda, actress, activist, and this was taken at a no nukes rally in Washington, D.C., May 6, 1979, uh, about a month before I graduated from high school. And I found a press pass on the ground at the front steps of the Capitol and walked up on stage where Jane Fonda was speaking to 50, 60,000 people. So it was like an almost famous moment. You know, you have a press pass, you put it on, you have a camera, you're allowed to go wherever you, you want to go. What I love about what you did in your life is you not only photograph the artist, but you photograph moments in time, history that's marked through their art. Take me then to the 80s, my friend. So the mid 80s, I moved to the Bay Area and I started shooting everything that I possibly could. I was trying to figure out how to get a gig. This is Led Zeppelin actually at Madison Square Garden. And there was a radio station here in San Francisco called KFOG. And I won a contest to win a trip to Madison Square mm -hmm. Garden for the 40th anniversary of Atlantic Records and Led Zeppelin played, I had a one single fake backstage pass from a thing I did in college and I used <laughs> it to go everywhere in that room that night. I got backstage into the press area, got right up to the front of the stage. This is Bay Area legend, Sammy Hagar, who's been here forever. <laughs> Sammy yeah. and I became good friends over this photograph. Shot for Rolling Stone in May of 1989. This was about my second or third assignment for Rolling Stone magazine. I went on to do 300 assignments. This is the cover of the book, shot at the Rainbow Gathering up in Northern California, uh, July 4th, 1984. And, you know, the Rainbow Gathering was the hippie ultimate place to destination you everybody wanted to get to the rainbow gathering and it's just an iconic photo that's now almost you know 40 years old uh, uh, this, captures feeling. Uh, this is shot in 1980 i was 18 years old this is up in lewiston maine uh it was the end of summer concert september 6 1980 i started college in new jersey a couple of days after that show and i've been documenting that modern day hippie tribe that started here in the haight ashbury in the mid early 60s and I still photograph deadheads and fans of rock and roll. Every time I go to a show, I'm always capturing that experience. Take me into the 90s when I was uh, graduating high school and starting college. Rolling Stones, Day on the Green, one of the legendary Bill Graham concerts here in the Bay Area. This is a really important photograph. This is backstage at Shoreline Amphitheater in 1980. I'm sorry, in 1992. This is 
Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. Pearl Jam was the opening act at Lollapalooza that year. Soundgarden, a few a few rungs above them playing. And Rolling Stone magazine wanted me to get a shot of any members of each of those bands together. And both bands said to the publicist, no, we all want to be in that shot together. And when Chris Cornell over there on the right passed away about five, six years ago, yeah. and I posted this on social media, it had a million views in about a week. Really an iconic photo to this day because of the the, the snacks on the table, the people in the photo, the way people are dressed. It really captures an important um, uh, moment in time in our pop culture history and rock and roll. This is Dr. Dre, the legendary young hip hop there. producer and <laughs> artist. Yeah. And and uh, this was shot for the cover of the Source magazine, which is a hip hop magazine, kind of the Bible of hip hop. One of those iconic moments with, with a legendary, legendary artist, Dr. Dre. And you are being seen now all around the world at exhibitions. Tell us uh, where this book and all of these photos are being celebrated these days. Yeah, so um, Retro Blakesburg Coffee Table Book uh, started during the pandemic by my daughter when she started an Instagram page called Retro Blakesburg, which is only photographs that I shot on film. And currently, I have my first solo museum exhibition at the Morris Museum in Morristown, New Jersey, which is the only Smithsonian affiliate museum in, in the state of New Jersey. And that exhibit is open until February 5th, 2023. Just go to morrismuseum.org and check that out. But it's an honor. I have four galleries, 125 prints. And again, everything in that exhibit is only photographs that I shot on film, nothing shot digitally. And it's really truly an honor to actually have a museum exhibit at 61 years old, um, still alive, get to enjoy it. My parents get to enjoy it, my family, my friends, and the people that have been enjoying my work for, for many, many years now and uh, experiencing it in book form or now on social media. Now they get to go see it on museum walls. I don't think there's anybody who will disagree with this statement. Music is woven through our youth. And when you photograph music, you give us our youth back. And you are absolutely right. Music really ties a lot of people together. And I want people, when they look at my photographs, to bring them back to that time where they were seeing those artists or at those shows or experiencing that music because that is what feeds our souls and, and, and soothes our souls. Rock and roll is, is uh, really important to all of us. That's right, and we need a little bit more of that these days. Thank you so much, Jay. The book is Retro Blakesburg, Volume 1, The Film Archives, on sale now on Amazon and independent bookstores nationwide. It's a beauty.